Okay, welcome back to another video of the Bootstrap Development Course. So, in this section we're actually going to build uh, our squirt shop. You already saw the design a little bit. And we're going to change a little bit uh, around. Um, this on the breadcrumb, we're going to put it on the bottom of the page, above the footer. It's a little bit easier and it also, it's also, also looks better. And in this video we're actually going to start with the first row. So, I took the liberty for you guys to already create a skeleton project. So if you go to the um, to the um, devscourts.com slash um, downloads, you can download the bootstrap assets and in there you can find all the projects we are building in this course. And I want you to open section 3, skeleton project, and I want you to open the index.html and the index.css inside of your code editor. And as you can see, I already imported the bootstrap, I already imported the CSS, and I already imported the JavaScript. So, when you open these files, you're ready to start coding with me. As stated before, I didn't uh, build this website myself, I just designed it. So, we are actually going to build it together. I'm going to explain to you how, uh, how everything works, why I do certain things, and I hope you understand it. So, yeah, I think let's start. Uh, if you don't have your folders open yet, uh, pause this video till you uh, have opened everything inside uh, your code editor. And after that you can start it again. So, let's get started. First thing we're going to do, inside the body, we're going to do a div class of container-fluid. And as you remember from the last section, the container fluid is a container that is always 100% of the viewport. And it resizes in the width. So when, when you have a big screen, it's a big container. We have a small screen, it's a small container. Inside there, we're gonna do a div class of main container. Close it up. And inside the main container, we're gonna do a div class of row. And we're gonna give this an extra separate class and we're gonna call this search row. And the reason for this is that when we call search row, we can uh, assign uh, different properties to it. So maybe we need it, I don't know yet. So. In here, we're going to do a div class. And now we have to start building columns. So let's check the designs. So I think, when we look at the design here, we have one, two, three attributes. So I think we can create three columns. This means we're going to create a column of three, a column of six, and another column of three. And when you add it all together, you have uh, 12. So I think that's going to be okay. So first thing, we're going to do call dash sn-12 call dash nd-3 sorry and call dash lg-3 and call dash xl-3 so what we did here we created four classes the call sn12 nd3 lg3 and xl3 so when the when the website is bigger than um, xl it's going to be column of three when it's uh, large it's going to be column of three when it's medium, it's column 3, and when it's getting small, it's going to stack everything in the middle in a column of 12. As you remember from the last from the last page, or the last section. So, are we also going to create another div class. And we're going to call call-sn-12, call-md-6, call-lg-6, and call-xl-6. So this is the column for the, for the search bar. And for the two icons, we also need a column three. So for our convenience, we're just gonna copy and paste this. Okay. So we're gonna open up the first column and we're gonna call EMG of class. And we're gonna call this logo. We're gonna call an SRC of source. Images, images dash um, scorch shop with capital, uh, capital uh, letters, dot png with small letters. Save this, let's see how this looks. Pretty cool, so we created our logo. So the next thing we need is our search bar and we're actually gonna use the search bar from uh, Bootstrap. And let's see, we need forms. So get bootstrap.com, then we go to components there you go to forms. I will wait a few seconds. 
so you guys can find it. Okay, so, and we're just gonna copy this one. So we're gonna look in the code, we're gonna call form of div class, and we're gonna take it till the last uh, div, so the closing div tag. We're gonna copy it. We're gonna open up this column and we're gonna paste it right in there. And under the div tag, we're gonna do a closing form. Okay, so we don't need the label, we're gonna delete that. We're gonna delete the small as well, because we only need the input. And we're gonna change the input type to text. And the area described by, we can delete that, because we don't need this. And we're gonna give this a placeholder of search for your product. Let's save this. And let's go to our website. Okay, as you can see now, we also have a search bar. And in the last column, we're gonna open that one up and we're gonna call the two images for the icons. So, we're gonna call EMG of class, the user of SRC, images dash user dot PNG. Close it. And under there, we're gonna call EMG of class and we're gonna call this um, basket of SRC basket oh, of images dash basket dot png. So the reason why I use images instead of buttons is because this is just a template. It, ju it doesn't have to be uh, a functional website. If this was a functional website, you could actually um, uh, make buttons out of this, or you give it um, you give it an uh, href, so you can uh, so an anchor tag, so it links to something. We're not going to do that because if you guys followed our HTML CSS course, I'm sure you know how to do it. So, as you can see now, the sizing is not really right yet, so we're going to change that. Let's go to the main container, and we're going to call dot user comma basket. basket dot basket sorry dot basket and we're gonna give this a margin dash left of 10 pixels we're gonna give this um, a height of 31 pixels we're gonna give this a width of 31 pixels okay let's say both files let's see how this looks and refresh. This looks really nice. Okay, so as you can see, the row doesn't is all the way on top, so it doesn't look really good, or really nice. So above the user and basket, we're gonna do dot uh, search row. Oh, and we're gonna give this a margin dash top of maybe 20 pixels. Let's save this and check. Ah, this looks a lot better. So this is why we gave our row. So that is the, um, the search row. This is why we gave it a separate class. So that's instead of uh, using different uh, CSS classes on every item that we are using, we only have to do it on the row. So the row takes, um, takes the place. So it's less work for us. Pretty cool. So the search bar doesn't look really like how we should have it so what we're gonna do we go to our bootstrap website and now we're gonna work with something that is called utilities in section 5 we're actually gonna talk about uh, the mostly used utilities and we're gonna talk about that uh, we, i'm gonna explain to you guys how everything works so bootstrap has like its own utilities for borders positions overflow shadows colors and we actually gonna check to the form row, to the form group, the form control, and we're gonna give this a border of just border, copy, and then we can paste it in form control, 
and we're gonna give it a shadow. So inside the list, we're gonna click shadow, and we're gonna take the regular shadow. So that's the third class, and we're gonna oh, we're only gonna copy the classes. Oh, so not the the div, not the class name, or not the class uh, attribute, but just the class name. And we're gonna paste it in there as well. Let's save this. Let's see how this looks. Pretty cool. But we still have to give it a different height because I'm not really happy with the height. So on the search row, we're gonna call dot form dash control. And we're gonna give this a height of 45 pixels. Let's see how this looks. Maybe a little bit bigger, maybe, oh, sorry, you're not supposed to see this yet. Maybe we're gonna work on 50 pixels. Yeah, this looks actually really nice. As you can see, it's still a little bit overlapping, but I don't think that it's gonna be an issue. But of course, we can fix that, and we're gonna fix that later in the course. So, now we're gonna fix the mobile, because this looks really nice. But as you can see on mobile, it really looks jammed together, right? So inside the CSS, we're gonna make some space and we're gonna add a media query. Oh, so in a media query, that means um, when something when something has a value, it's gonna override all the CSS that you wrote. So in this case, we're gonna do um, media screen and. And we're gonna give this a max width of 765 pixels. Okay, and we're gonna call the um, the form. We're gonna call the form group in this case because we didn't have custom CSS for it, but we're gonna call form group form dash group. And we're gonna give this a margin dash top of 20 pixels. Let's see what happens. Yeah, as you can see now, now we created some spacing between the logo and between the um, this. And that only happens when the screen is set uh, at a certain um, at a certain width. So when we make it bigger, as you can see, it still has the same width of uh, of the same higher margin on uh, bigger devices. But when we make it smaller, we actually have some spacing. And we're also going to do the same for this these classes so we're going to copy paste this one and on the form group we're going to paste it open it up and we're going to give this a margin dash top of minus 35 pixels and yes you can work with uh, negative margins you don't have to worry about it so let's see yes this looks a lot better because now we have them on top this is pretty nice so, in this video we created the first row, we created uh, a logo, a search for your product, and we have our uh, margins of our icons here. The last thing we're gonna fix is like this overlapping, right? Because this is not something that we want. So we're gonna inspect the element, and let's see what the width is over there. It's, the width is 800. 850, maybe more, 900, 870, okay. So above the media screen, we're gonna do another. So add media screen and max width of 860 pixels. And we're gonna call the form control, so dot form dash control. And we're gonna give this a margin dash left of 20 pixels. Let's save both files, let's see what happens. As you can see, you saw that. As you can see, when we go, it doesn't overlap anymore, it just pops, and then it's smaller. But now we have this problem, right? So, we're gonna go back to our this one and we're gonna give this a margin dash left of auto let's see what happens 
maybe left of zero pixels. Let's see what happens. Hmm. Okay, apparently max width. Oh, wait a second. Of course, we need to call not the form group, but we need to call uh, form control. I'm sorry. So dot form dash control. Paste it in here. And we're going to give this an auto. And this should work. Yes, now it works. So as you saw, I made a mistake. I'm not going to edit that out because I think you learn more from making mistakes. Um, of course, when um, in the future when we when we the instructors make mistakes that take like 40 50 minutes to fix we're gonna edit that but for now now you saw that i made a mistake because i thought i already called this uh, group or this this uh, class and i didn't so but i think we made a lot of prog progress in this video so in this video i'm gonna delete this one we created our first row with icons a logo and a search bar and it looks also really nice on mobile so I want to congratulate you guys on this, uh, on finishing this first video. And in the next video, we're going to build a navigation bar and so on and so on. So I hope you learned something. I hope you understand a little bit how it works and I hope to see you in the next video.